Hey guys, it's Jalen. I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm just bringing you a quick little video. I'm just gonna be talking about one writing tip and it's this little flashback slash non-linearity hack. It's really just one tip and it's about keeping causality when you're integrating flashbacks. Flashbacks are a very common literary device. You find them in almost every novel and a substantial amount of short stories. So it's important to remember when you're writing a flashback that a flashback isn't supplementary information. This is what can cause these issues where you're just including too many flashbacks or flashbacks that aren't necessary or you don't know where to place them. If you're thinking of it as supplementary information that's there to flesh out the character backstory because that means that it's disconnected from the main story. It's better to see flashbacks as part of your story's causal chain. So if your story is a causally connected chain of events where scene A causes scene B and scene C and scene B causes scene C and scene C causes scene D, etc, etc throughout the novel, um, and ideally that causal chain is as tight as possible, it might not be perfect. The longer your story gets, it might not be perfect. We're going to assume that we have a perfect causal chain like in the ideal story. And the shorter your piece is, the simpler it usually is to maintain that. A flashback is part of that causal chain. So if your flashback is scene B, it's caused by scene A and it causes scene C, even if it happened before the start of the story. Even though a flashback is non-linear technically because you're breaking the linearity of the story, it's actually still part of the story's linear progression. It's a necessary stepping stone that we need to cross in order to get to the next scene, even if that scene happened out of order. If you want to read a book that does this really brilliantly, I would look at Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Um, it's an extremely non-linear narrative, but it makes so much sense. So we're going to look at two case studies here and look at two different ways that a flashback can be part of a story's linear progression, even if it is non-linear. So the first way is where that link is information. And this is when an event that happened in the past is directly impacting what's happening now. So that information is actually crucial for us to progress to the next scene because this thing that happened in the past is going to directly impact how the events are unfolding. So let's say that we have three scenes here. So we have scene A, which is in the fictive present, scene F, which is a flashback, and then scene C, which is again back to the fictive present. We're going to enter on a scene and then we're going to cut the flashback. And this, the information we learn in the flashback is actually going to directly build on the information that was introduced in scene A. And then it's going to directly cause to the developing conflict in scene C. So we actually need this scene. This thing that happened in the past actually impacts the plot. And it gives us critical information that's going to change how we interpret and understand the narrative and the events in scene C because it has a direct impact on how the events are going to unfold. Let's say that in scene A, your main character runs into an old friend. Now let's jump back to scene F. We learn that 10 years ago, the main character horribly sabotaged this old friend. They ruined an important opportunity for this friend kind of just due to their own jealousy. However, the friend never found out that it was the protagonist who did this and the protagonist just cut ties with them because they couldn't really face their secret getting out. They didn't know how to continue being friends with this person now that they'd completely sabotaged them. Now cut back to scene C. These two characters' interactions have a completely different set of stakes and such different tension and conflict because now we know that the reason they haven't seen each other in 10 years is because the main character sabotaged the friend. So now as their interactions play out, that thing that happened in the flashback has a direct impact on how the scene is going to play out, right? Maybe that opportunity is going to come up or maybe the friend has since learned that it was the protagonist who sabotaged them and sought them out for this reason and is looking for some revenge. Who knows, there are tons of possibilities. But the way that their interactions play out and the way their relationship plays out in this scene and from now onwards is directly impacted by something that happened in the past. So we had to jump back to the past to progress linearly. So you have to go back to go forward. Now, another way that scenes can be linked is just through emotion. And this has similar effect on the story. It also impacts our understanding of the events and it might even impact how the events unfold. This is when the event in the past doesn't actually directly impact how the events unfold, but it gives us the context we need to understand the main character's emotional reaction. And because a character's emotional reaction probably does have a direct impact on the plot, 
Um, ideally, if your character is an active participant in the plot and their actions and reactions are going to shape the story, this is actually really important context to have. So we have our same three scenes, scene A, scene F, which is a flashback, and then back to the Victor present in scene C. So let's say that in scene A, the main character is trying to comfort their friend who has just gone through a horrible breakup, but they don't do a very good job. The friend is left just kind of more agitated than before, and the main character feels kind of helpless in this situation. Now we're going to cut to an unrelated scene where the main character finds some, let's say an injured animal, let's keep it pretty low stakes so this doesn't get too sad, maybe just like an injured butterfly, it's walking around with like a broken leg or something, and the main character tries to like create a little terrarium for it and so it can heal, but it ends up dying. Now we're back to the fictive present in scene C where the main character is dealing with being rejected by their friend because they really failed at trying to comfort them. And the butterfly has no impact on the story's overall conflict or stakes really in any way. It doesn't really even have an impact on the plot. But it's an important memory from their childhood that shapes them as a person, and it shapes them in a way that is being explored now. We understand their relationship to the feeling of helplessness. So our understanding of the character becomes deeper, and we have better context to understand what they're feeling in this moment in the fictive present. In both these cases, the flashback supplements what's happening in the present in an important or necessary way. Adding flashbacks just like haphazardly throughout a story can break up the flow of your narrative because if you just add flashbacks kind of wherever without thinking of how they're causally connected to the scenes before and after them, then what happens is you're just breaking up the causal chain of your story, right? If you have scene A causes scene B causes scene C, etc, etc, in this beautiful causal chain in the fictive present, and you're just randomly throwing in flashbacks, you're breaking up that amazing tension and causality and structure that you've created in the present. But if the flashbacks you're adding are part of that structure, they're part of that causality, they're part of the building tension, then you don't lose tension when you're jumping into a flashback. You actually increase the tension. And that can be a really big problem, right? If you add a flashback that's not necessary or poorly timed, you lose tension. In the fictive present, that's where the main conflict and stakes of the story are. That's what we're primarily invested in. And we also don't know the outcome of these events. In the past, we kind of do know the outcome for the most part because we caught up with the character after these things happened. We already know where the character is in life after these events have transpired. You know, flashbacks can be great, they can be really mysterious, and there can be a lot of tension there if you have like the slow reveal of a character's backstory. It's just not the main conflict and source of tension. I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of books or shows or movies you've read where the, the flashbacks were actually more interesting than what was happening in the present, but that's often kind of a narrative flaw because in that case it usually means that the real story was in the past, not in the present. But if you think about flashbacks as being part of your story's linear structure, even if it's hard to wrap your mind around, you're doing some time travel, like you're jumping back but it's still a necessary stepping stone, then you're not losing that tension, you're not losing that conflict, um, you're actually strengthening it and supplementing it with necessary information. This can also be really useful if you're writing a really non-linear story, if you're writing a story where there are multiple timelines all weaving together, rather than just a handful of flashbacks here or there, maybe you have several timelines that are kind of all unfolding together. This can help you braid them together in a way where rather than having three, say, distinct storylines that are progressing separately and you're always cutting between you kind of have one cohesive storyline made up of three different timelines that's all moving together simultaneously. So that's all for this video. Um, my question for this video is what is your favorite non-linear book? I already mentioned I love Vicious by B.E. Schwab and another really great non-linear book is Monkey Beach by Ian Robinson. Um, fantastic book and it's an example of a book where you have a really narrow fictive present, so what's happening in the fictive present is in a really, really small time frame, like basically one day, that's used as a frame to illuminate a very vast backstory. So it's a really cool example of non-linearity, of non-linearity, and it's very organic and really well done. So I'd love to know what your favorite non-linear books are. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye!